in this video, we're going to look at how we answer auxiliary review questions in a question paper exam. Auxiliary review questions that you would find in the higher question paper are approached in a very similar way to how you would approach true shape questions in a National 5 question paper. You're going to start looking at your orthographic views, so your elevation and elevation plan, to try and find out key dimensions that are going to help you with your auxiliary view. Now, the auxiliary view is always projected at 90 degrees to your surface. So in this case, when we're looking for A, we're going to be going at 90 degrees to this sloping surface here. For B, we're going to go in the direction of this one. And for C, we're going to be at right angles to the bottom of it. With a lot of these questions, what you're looking to do is try and rule out certain ones. So just now you've got an option of one from four. And what you want to do is try and reduce the number of options that you've got. By reducing those options, you're going to increase the chance that you're going to get it right. So you're looking for kind of obvious errors or size and dimensions that rule this view out completely. Now, for these questions, you can use a variety of different things to help you. You can use a ruler to start measuring off sizes. You can use a pair of compasses or you can use a trammel. Now, my preference is usually to use a set of compasses. I tend not to use a ruler just because you're having to remember the measurement every single time. Whereas with a pair of compasses, you can set it to one size and you can compare it quickly to all of them without having to remeasure. A trammel allows you to mark certain dimensions onto it and then compare that around. So it works in the exact same way you would use a pair of compasses. But again, you can also note down the size alongside it or what it refers to, what dimension it refers to, so you know that you can pair it in the right place every single time. But what we're going to do in this video is we're going to use the pair of compasses for it. So like I said earlier, what we're looking to do is try and rule out certain sizes. Now, just like with true shape questions, we're going to use the widths are going to come from the end elevation or the plan. It doesn't really matter which position you take it from. In this case, I'm going to take it from the end elevation. Now, it's a hexagonal prism that's been cut along the top. So I'm going to start by taking these widths from point to point along the bottom. I'll then check it from the middle and at the top to try and compare them with these views here to see which ones it rules out automatically. So setting my pair of compasses to the position at the bottom. I'm then going to compare it against that same size along each of these views. So looking at the first one, it matches. So it continues that it could be this one. It looks like it could still be that one. This one matches up with the same size. However, with this one, you can see it's significantly narrower. Now, there will always be maybe slight millimeter discrepancies, just depending on how it's been photocopied, but that shouldn't be the case. So looking at that, I can fairly confidently say that at the moment, it looks like it's not going to be the one in the bottom right. So I'm just going to put a little line through that so that I know that I don't have to consider one at the moment. I then set my compass to the middle size. And I do the same thing. I work, work my way around. Now, looking at that one, it's significantly narrower across there. So it looks like it won't be that one. This one, again, looks like it's unlikely to be that one. Whereas this one does have a direct match. So at this point, I'm going to rule this out and rule this out. I still haven't set that it's going to be this one, although in all likelihood it looks like it could be. So I'm going to use that third size across the top. And again, just compare it into that. So again, definitely narrow in there. So certainly not going to be this one. This one, again, looks far too narrow. This one looks spot on. And this one, again, still significantly narrower. So I can quite confidently say at this point that it's going to be, that view is going to be my correct answer. And that's all just done by process of elimination. If I was wanting to go further and I still didn't have an answer just by checking the widths, I would then start looking at my lengths. So I would take the overall length of that surface, because again, I can take this one because it is at 90 degrees, and I could re reference it against each one of these and look along to say, right, do these match up with the sizes that I've got? And again, in this case, it was only this one that has a direct match to the, the exact true length of that shape. So at that point, I can confidently say, it's this view down in the bottom corner. It's asked me to tick the box, and I tick that one off. So for part B of this question, you can see that it's a much more complicated auxiliary view. You can see a lot more surfaces, and there are a lot more sloping angles to it. What I'm going to show for this example is how you can use the heights and how you would have to project them to be able to use the heights, as well as then confirm it with the widths. 
Same idea, though, we're looking to go through a process of elimination to rule out the views that we're not going to use so that we can find the one that is correct. This time, we're looking in at surface B, and you can see what I've done here is I've drawn a line with a rule parallel to that, but then coming off from here, we've got our 90 degree lines that match up with the various points. I've projected them because what that shows in this case is the length of them as they would be shown in this surface. I've had to do it in 90 degrees so I can see what the width would be along this line so I can compare it along this centre line here so that we've got it as they would appear in the auxiliary view because the heights would be projected down at that angle and that's what we're looking at over here. I can still use the widths from the elevation or widths from the plan depending on what our preference is but just to show that there's two different ways you can approach this we're going to go through it with the heights. This can be quite tricky to do in an exam setting if you don't have a set square or a protractor to be able to calculate where your 90 degree angles are. But again, you could approximate it and that's why the widths would work with the compass as well. So what I'm going to start with is what would be my overall height of the auxiliary view. I'm going to project the size from the compass, just take that there. And then I'm going to compare it against each one of these. So you can see the height on each one of them is actually fairly consistent. So the overall length of it has not given me any kind of indication of which one would be would be incorrect. At this next point, I can decide what length I'll take. So I'm going to take the overall length of this surface. I'm going to bypass this line just now because that's just going to the, the point of the hexagons. I'm going to set my compasses to that. And I'm going to transfer that across. So again, I can see that size for here looks pretty accurate. This one looks significantly shorter on that surface. This one looks pretty close. This one looks quite far out. So at that point, I would temporarily rule them out. I would then go to my next size, which is the surface for B here, without the sloping edge. And I compare that against that middle size. So again, looks like that could be quite accurate there. This one we've already ruled out, but we can definitely rule out now because that surface is far too short. This surface also looks too short. And again, having already ruled this one out, this appears to be too short as well. So we can be pretty certain that these two are not correct. And we now think that it's less likely that this one will be the correct answer. The next part that I could try and use is to try and take that size from here, so the overall height of that surface, and I could transfer that across and use that to make a comparison. Seems like it's okay for that one. And again, that hasn't given as much of an indication. It still seems like this could be a possibility, even though we think it's unlikely. We've already ruled these two out. So at that point, I've kind of run out of size that I can use for my length, so I have to go and refer back to my widths. I'm gonna use exactly the same ones as I used earlier on this video. I'm going to start by taking this surface here, or these two surfaces here, because they're the ones that are most clearly visible in that. So I'm going to take along that middle edge here, the one that we used first of all in the last video, and I'm going to compare it against that central size there. It appears that this one still could be a contender, but this one significantly shorter. And I think at that point, without comparing the other sizes, you could quite confidently say that it's this view. For the final part of this question, looking at surface C, I'm going to just quickly show you how you would use a trammel to work this part of the question out. So again, using the trammel, what you're looking to do is place it parallel to the edge at the bottom. And what you can do is you can mark just with a pen or a pencil where the position of these lines would be. You could also look to project these lines down. That would require use of a set square or a ruler if you didn't have one to hand just to allow you to approximate it, to give you an indication of where that would be. And that shows that there's going to be one, two, three surfaces that are visible in this view. And again, as we take it across to these view here, we could then look to try and draw a comparison. Now at this point, this middle point here is actually a central point of the hexagon. So it allows us to see, does that line up? So again, able to try and rule that one out. Although the overall length is right, the length of this middle surface and the point of that surface isn't correct. This one, however, you can see that looks to be alignment at three different points, including the middle one as well. 
moving down to this one, alignment with here and here and potentially in the middle, but certainly not with that surface there. And for this one here, we're looking to see, well, again, alignment at the end and there, but off into other places. So already it's indicating that it may be this surface here. At the same time, you could then move to a different point of your trammel and use the widths and do the exact same process to allow you to compare how wide the various surfaces are that you would see. You could take the overall width and you can take the width of that hexagon and you could lay it against those objects to see how that would work. The quickest way to try and rule out different views is definitely from using the widths either from the end elevation or from the plan, depending on what views are available to you. You then need to consider the angle of the surface and where you're projecting lines from. And you can use a pair of compasses, a trammel or a ruler but I would definitely do it in that order with the preference being for compasses or a trammel before using a ruler. Even if you can't find a definite answer, even being able to reduce the options down to one or two allows you to have a better chance of getting the question correct rather than just having a random tick in a box. Definitely better to try and get your chances down to maybe 50% of getting it right rather than 25%. There's only a handful of these questions in the past papers but it is a good one for them to use for visual interpretation and interpretation of different views, so one that's quite likely to come up each year.